What's going on guys? I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com. You know what we do in Phone Dog Land when we have two awesome phones that need to be put together for the test? We dogfight them. That's what we do. We put together the Atrix 2 in this dogfight battle versus the HTC Amaze 4G. Both awesome phones, both awesome Android phones at that. Now this is a successor to the popular Motorola Atrix 4G on AT&T. It has a dual core processor at 1 gigahertz, a 4.3 inch QHD display. It's a little bigger display and an 8 megapixel camera with 1080p HD video recording on the back. Then you have the Amaze 4G, dual core 1.5 gigahertz processor over here, 8 megapixel camera with a flash on the back, 4.3 inch display, but a beautiful, beautiful build quality. Take a look at this metal. It feels great in the hand, and it's an awesome device as well. Which one's going to win? We'll find that out in the full dogfight. But first, special thanks to my boys at Best Buy for hooking us up with Atrixes, Amazes, all kinds of cool phones for use in our one Paul Bandit game. When you go into Best Buy Mobile to get either of these devices, you won't deal with rebates. I hate debit cards. I hate waiting for all that stuff. At Best Buy Mobile, you'll pay out the door what you would pay after rebates. Pretty cool. It's only at Best Buy Mobile. Enough of that. Let's get into it. Atrix 2, Amaze 4G. Which one's the winner? We'll find out starting right now. So you know you have some awesome Android devices on the horizon now that are not only coming, but you have some awesome ones on the market as well. One of those is the Motorola Atrix 2. It's a high-end device from AT&T, but where it really wins is the price point for 100 bucks with a two-year agreement. You get a device that has a one gigahertz dual core processor, a 4.3 inch QHD display, and this time around, they've killed off the Pentile technology, which you know from the Droid Bionic and from some of the other Motorola devices, the Photon 4G, the Electrify. And you know, while it does make the screen brighter, it's pretty pixelated and you can tell. So on this one, a bigger display from the original Atrix 4G. It's a 4.3 inch QHD display but no pentile. 8 megapixel camera on the back with 1080p HD video recording, a 1735 milliamp hour battery, and kind of a revised design as well that to me looks a little bit more professional. You've got your micro uh, USB slot over here and HDMI out, and then you have uh, a nice kind of texturized battery door. 3.5 millimeter headphone jack up here with a power button. They've done away with the biometric fingerprint reader, but hey, you know what, I guess a lot of people weren't using it or maybe they just decided to get rid of it this time around to save costs. Whatever the case, it uh, I'm not necessarily missing it. The device still looks pretty good. You have a volume rocker over here, camera shortcut button as well. So it's a good looking device. It feels good in the hand and it's running Android 2.3.5 with Motorola's custom user interface. So you've got seven, excuse me, five home screens over here. You can just see this device, you know, they swapped out and the original it had a one gigahertz dual core NVIDIA Tegra 2 processor. This one has a one gigahertz dual core TI OMAP processor. So they swapped it out for that Texas Instruments processor. But you can see, you know, day to day use, at least for me, I haven't noticed any slowdowns. It seems just as fast to me across the board. And you can see that the menu interface, it scrolls from side to side as opposed to up and down like the typical uh, Android structure. You get your typical AT&T apps in here. You get Code Scanner, Family Map, Navigator, and it's important to note all of these can be uninstalled if you don't want them. So kudos to AT&T, and actually with Motorola's interface, you can uninstall directly from the menu as opposed to having to go through the settings and uninstall that way. So you can see I can click uninstall, takes me right there, and takes it off of the device. And you've got a couple of other things here. Featured apps as well. You have Let's Golf 2, which I do believe that can be uninstalled. I just want to double check. Yep, uninstall that. You get movies, you get Music Store, My AT&T, Quick Light, and then you get a Social Location, which is actually a pretty cool program. I'll show you that a little later. Webtop connector, so you can connect this into the lap dock, the HD dock, and some of the other goodies. You can see it goes into landscape mode. But you do get a nice accessory ecosystem with this. And YP Mobile, another cool feature of uh, Motorola's custom UI is you can organize by group. So up here where I can click All Apps, I can see Recent, Downloaded, and I can see AT&T. When I click on that, it brings up all the AT&T bloatware that's pre-installed. Now, obviously, I can't remove something like Mobile Hotspot, but I can remove it from the group, and then, of course, I can put it on the home screen if I want to. So five home screens on this sucker, and then you have the Amaze 4G over here. It's a little bit faster on the, uh, the specs front. It has a 1.5 gigahertz dual-core Snapdragon S3 CPU. It has a 4.3-inch display, also QHD on this bad boy. And then it has an 8 megapixel camera on the back with dual LED flash and 1080p HD video recording. It's also running Android 2.3, but it's running HTC Sense version 3.0. And you can see some of the benefits of Sense 3.0. The lock screen's changed. If you're coming from maybe the Thunderbolt or the Evo 4G, you'll see some changes here. You can create customized lock screens. You can put the weather on it. You can put friend stream on it. You can put stocks on it, a clock on it. So it's nice to kind of customize that. And then you can put your four uh, most used applications down at the bottom. It's pretty easy to open up, but you still get seven home screens over here. But if you're coming from an older version, you'll notice right away that there are some different, uh, different animations to it, if you will. You can see when scrolling from left to right, you see that kind of carousel effect that it's doing as opposed to the typical, you know, just kind of blocky slide left to right. So that's a nice little 
uh, graphically, kind of aesthetically appealing thing, if you will. And he has a typical HTC Sense uh, looking widget. So seven home screens on this bad boy. Then you have your notification bars here. Now one benefit to the Atrix 2's notification bar, I do like the ability to remove individual things. So let's say I have a voicemail, I have a missed call, I have some emails, and I have a text message. Well, let's say I know who the text message is from. On this one, I can get rid of it right away, get rid of the email, and I can keep the phone and the voicemail up there in case I need to call those people back and need that kind of physical memory to uh, to bring it back. Then over here you have quick settings, little shortcut tab to activate Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi hotspot, mobile network, uh, Bluetooth, and more. And then of course getting to HTC's file manager without uh, having to go into the settings. So much like this one had the ability to remove applications from the app drawer, that one has the ability to go into settings like Wi-Fi, frequently use things without having to go into uh, the notification, or without having to go into the settings. So it's a win-win on both parts. Now you have 411 and more on this T-Mobile device. You have Highlight, HTC Hub, and HTC Likes, which we'll get into in just a bit. Lookout security, more for me. My device, my account, uh, Polaris Office, Pro Apps, T-Mobile Name ID, T-Mobile TV HD, uh, Video Chat, Visual Voicemail, Wi-Fi Hotspot, and Zinio Reader. Now you have a very similar setup over here from the bottom. You can see frequently used applications. You can see my downloaded applications, and you can scroll back and forth between those. So much like that little groups folder thing that you have up in the top of Motorola's UI, you have kind of a similar feature here. Now the downside is you can't uninstall these devices or uninstall these applications from the actual menu itself. You have to go into settings and scroll down to applications and then go into manage applications. And of course on both of these now you can uninstall, or excuse me, install non-Android market apps. So that's a nice little touch. We'll go into all here. And you can see 411 and more. A lot of the T-Mobile programs can't be uninstalled. So you don't want that. Let's say you don't want T-Mobile TV. We'll scroll the way down here so you can take a look. Go ahead to T-Mobile TV or name ID for example. You can force stop it. But none of this stuff can be uninstalled. So, you know, the T-Mobile bloatware kind of a uh, hit on the T-Mobile device because a lot of people don't want these little bloatware kind of crap applications. Uh, and that's, you know, a hit against them. the, the uh, inability to remove those is certainly frustrating. But you do get that. Seven home screens, like I said. And then uh, Sense. You know, Sense has always done a really good job of offering a lot of personalization. They have a great personalization menu here. You can see you can change the skin up. You can change the wallpaper. You can change the lock screen. I told you I'd talk a little bit about HTC Hub and HTC... Uh, uh, HTC likes rather and that's what I was going to talk about you can go into hub and you can go into likes and take a look here and click directly and you can download custom wallpaper custom themes custom skins all from HTC store and all for free so T-Mobile opted to leave that on the device so that's a big kudos to them because you get bored of the wallpaper on this maybe you want another theme you want something different maybe a, a different looking uh, rare or different ringtone for example you can download that from HTC hub and you can download it for free. Now what I was saying about the lock screens, you can go in here and customize your lock screen. You can make it nothing to kind of conserve battery life. You can go in here and see friend stream, weather, stocks, and clock, and then you can customize all those little applications at the bottom when I go into settings, or excuse me, when I go into, uh, I thought it was settings, I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, there we go, and so I can change the lock screen shortcuts. So that's a pretty cool little touch, but one thing I really like about the Amaze 4G, I've always criticized Android because in comparison to the iPhone 4S, you know, Android, I've always felt like they have kind of a rickety build quality. I love the Galaxy S2 series, but they're pretty plasticky and pretty flimsy feeling. And I think HTC did a great job this time around. Now this one's a little bit heavier. It's 6.1 ounces, if I remember right, but it has a killer design with these metal accents over on the side, metal accent on the back, soft touch plastic here, and it's, you know, all brings together, or comes together, to make a device that really feels great in the hand. I mean, I can tell you this device feels fantastic. There's no creaking whatsoever, as opposed to uh, some of these other devices. And while this one feels good, there's definitely a plastic feel to it, and it, you can definitely tell it's unmatched, uh, or it definitely you can tell it, uh, the iPhone 4S is unmatched, and you know, it, it definitely falls prey to that kind of creaky Android build that I'm talking about. Now this one feels great in the hand, can definitely go up against iOS. It's one of those devices where I think people will be like, wow, this is a really nice device. Now the difference here, this one, 100 bucks at AT&T, this one, 260 bucks at T-Mobile. So something to keep in mind, there's a huge price difference here. So it's gonna be one of those things, so whichever one wins, you gotta keep in mind the price as well. So you got a, uh, a little bit of a disparity on the price point. 1,730 milliamp hour battery over here. So pretty decent sized battery, something that comes in the Evo 3D. So you're not gonna get incredible battery life on this device, but it should still be pretty decent. Let's take a look at widgets as well. And we'll load up both of the widget screens here. And this brings up the personalizations menu. This kind of brings up this typical bland uh, stock Android screen. We'll go into widgets and take a look at both. Now, Motorola has custom widgets, HTC has custom widgets, and you can see here, Calendar, for example, HTC and Android 
and I, I go into HTC and you can take a look here. Now you get a bunch of different options with HTC. I have three calendar options here, for example, I can do the small one, I can do the agenda, or I can do the month view. Whereas with this one, you know, it's only one calendar, but what's really cool about this is the ability to customize the size of the widget. So let's actually go back here and go to the one that was already on the screen. I can customize the size of this widget. So I want it to be that way, I can make it that way. I want to make it bigger, I can make it a little bit bigger. I didn't mean to scroll it over there. Hard to do without having it in my hand. Let's see. There we go. So I can make it bigger like that if I want to as well. So the option to customize is really great for one of those areas. You know, when you're in a tight kind of screen like this, you have a small space, you want to fill it up. You can't do that with HTC widgets, as beautiful as they are, you can't customize it. But uh, with this one, you can customize the size, which is such a big perk, uh, in my opinion.